Hello everyone and welcome back to Live Art Time for Kids and my name is Julie and today guess what we're going to be drawing? Guess what? A graceful giraffe except for I decided that since great giraffes are known for being so tall and you know people call them graceful but when they have to get a drink of water they really have to figure out how to get all the way down there to that puddle of water. So I thought it'd be really, really funny to call it a graceful giraffe. It's probably not that graceful after all. And you can see him. He's got his legs spread way apart so that he can get all the way down there and get that water. And I didn't put the water in the picture, but you can imagine that he's standing right in front of a pool of water. So hello, Chase. Thank you, everyone, for coming and tuning in. Let me know who's here, where you're from, what your name is, um, and... We're going to get started just in a little bit, so I'll kind of give you a sneak peek of what we're going to be doing the next two weeks as everyone kind of comes aboard. So we're doing the giraffe today, and we're going to be doing this sweet hedgehog, just kind of daydreaming in the grass on Thursday. And then next week, we're going to be doing a rainbow tiger. And I didn't have this one available to show you, but here's what we're going to be doing next Thursday. So I don't know how many of you have ever been to an aquarium, but when you're looking at the glass and you're watching the stingrays and they're kind of swimming by and then suddenly one of them will like press itself up against the glass and you're a little surprised. So guess what? Just like that, right? So we're going to be doing stingrays next week. So I'm really excited to be able to do all these with you. Hello, Owen and Nora. Thanks for coming back. And um, so anyway, this is what's on the plate for the next two weeks, this week and next. And today is the giraffe. Hello, Anna. Thanks for coming. So we're going to, as far as art supplies today, you have two choices. So I'm going to start with a black marker. I use a Sharpie just because when I use watercolor, if you use a Sharpie, and you put water on top of it, that marker line doesn't go anywhere. If you use a, a marker that's got water in it and you put any kind of water or watercolor on top of it, it can kind of spread out and it's called bleeding, but the marker kind of goes everywhere. So if you're gonna use watercolor and you don't have to have it be a Sharpie, but you wanna look for something waterproof or you wanna use um, an oil pastel or a crayon. So I'm gonna be using a marker today and then I'm going to be using and I, I have different looking crayons because these are kind of fun lately. Um, but I'm going to be using these for the spots. And then I'm going to be painting on top of it with, um, with watercolor. Hello, Willow. Thanks for joining me. So if you don't have watercolors, you can do this whole thing with oil pastels or crayons. And even if you don't have a marker, you could do the entire thing with crayons. Your steps might be a little bit different. So when we get to coloring in our giraffe, I'll tell you, if you have watercolors, you're going to do it one way. And if you have crayons, you might want to choose a different way to save yourself a little bit of time. So I decided, and you know what? I made this giraffe yellow, but guess what? If you want to make an orange giraffe, you can do that too. So today it is totally your choice, whatever color you want your giraffe to be. So we're going to get started and I want you to grab whatever you're using to draw today. So if that's a marker or a black crayon or a black oil pastel, I want you to grab it and I want you to put it in the hand that you're going to be drawing with. Now you can see, and I'm going to scoot you guys closer to, 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 to there we go. Um, so this is my drawing hand and I want you to take your other hand and I want you to make a fist just like this. And here's the bottom of my paper right in the middle and I want you to go ping and raise your pinky up and ping, raise your pointer finger up. So you have this look on your fingers and on your hand and we're actually going to use this to draw the bumps on the giraffe's head. Does anyone know what they're called? Because they're not horns and they're not bumps. They're called ossicones. It's kind of like ice cream cone, isn't it? Hello, um, Clara and Everly and Lillian. I'm so glad you came. So again, fist, pinky up, ping, index finger up, ping. And then here's my wrist right here where my watch is. You guys probably aren't wearing a watch, but I'm going to put it at the bottom of my paper just like this. And it looks kind of funny. And I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to go around my pinky and I'm going to go bump, bump over these fingers and then around my index finger and then I'm going to stop. So just like this. 
So around my pinky and down, bump, bump, because giraffes have a bumpy head. And then around my index finger, and then I'm gonna stop. And you're gonna have the same marks of your fingers right there. So that is the start of your giraffe's kind of lumpy head. And then what we're gonna do is right at the top of the head here, we're gonna come down and we're gonna draw two straight lines. It's kind of at the start of his, where his nose is, kind of the bridge of his nose. On each side of these two lines, we're gonna draw small rainbow lines because he is a happy giraffe and he is smiling. And then we're gonna give him his nostrils first. And one of the reasons we draw his nostrils first is because it's gonna help us draw the line around the nostrils and know how big we want his mouth to be. So at the bottom of this line right here, I'm gonna draw a little tiny rainbow line and another little tiny rainbow line. And then I'm gonna draw a little circle underneath each one. Those are his nostrils. So now we have an idea of where I'm gonna draw his mouth and that way I don't make sure his mouth is too small. So I'm gonna start on one side, right where that little rainbow line is right there, and I'm gonna put a dot, and then I'm gonna to go to the other side where that little rainbow line is, and on the other side of it, I'm gonna put a dot. And I am going to make, and I'm gonna use my finger first, and I'm gonna make a smile line. But this smile line's gonna get wider as it goes down, and then it's gonna get skinnier as it comes up. So I'm gonna start here, come down, and it's a big smile line. And I'm gonna connect my dots. Underneath this smile line, I'm gonna draw another little line. Right underneath that line I just did, another little smile line. And there you can see how his face is starting to take shape. And he still doesn't really look like a giraffe, does he? So I'm going to connect where I left off to his nose, or not his nose, I'm sorry, to his, his big mouth area. And on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. Now he's missing something really important, isn't he? He's missing his ears. So these are those bumps that a giraffe has. See, I brought my friend the giraffe, so he's got these little ossicones, right? But we need to draw his ears. And do you see how they're below? the ossicones and they kind of stick out. So that's what we're gonna draw next. So right here in the middle of this bump, which was your finger, right? You're gonna draw a curved line out and a curved line in. That's his first ear. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So find the middle of that ossicone or that bump, draw a curved line out and a curved line in. Now my giraffe, I want him to have little tiny dark areas inside. So I'm gonna draw another curved line on the inside so I can color those a little bit darker. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So he's starting to look more like a giraffe, isn't he? So we got his head, but now we gotta do his body. So one thing that we're gonna, do you see how we have this bump? Because when you made this, when you did this, your knuckles were these bumpy parts, right? So right here on the first bump, you're gonna take a line, you're gonna go straight up and off the page. And then there should be another bump and you're gonna go straight off the page. So what you're drawing now is you're drawing this part right here. And it's kind of that ridge where all of his neck, his neck fur grows. And then I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna do something that looks a little strange but I'm gonna draw kind of a scribble zigzag line all the way up from his head to the top of the page. And the reason that is, is when I color it in or I paint it in, it's gonna look a little bit darker, so it has the appearance that that giraffe has a ridge. So I have my head, I have the start of the neck, and now I'm going to do the body. And the body kind of looks like a big light bulb. So I'm gonna take this off. Do you see how his body almost, it's a bulb? So when I do this line, it's gonna go out and it's gonna come back in and it's gonna go right off the page, kind of like a big light bulb. 
So I'm going to start, let's put this back here. I'm going to start right here, right where his little horn or his little acetone meets his ear. And I'm going to come out and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to go right off the page. And then on the other side where the ear meets that little horn, that little acetone, I'm going to put my marker right there. I'm going to start moving up. I'm going to start going out, but I'm not going to go far out. I'm going to reverse and I'm going to go right off the page. And the reason he looks kind of silly is because he's got his legs spread out and he's got his, he's got his head down and he's kind of, he's kind of got his butt right in the air like that. So see, that's what we're drawing. So we have his head, we have his body, and while we're doing his body, we're going to just give him his little tail off to the side before we forget. So off to whatever side of the paper you want, you're going to draw two straight lines and you're going to draw a teardrop that's facing that way. So you're going to draw a letter C, come to a point, and then come right back. And there's his tail. And now it's time for those legs. So we're going to pick an ear. So whatever ear you want to pick first is absolutely fine. And that ear meets the head somewhere, doesn't it? I'm going to put my marker right here. And I'm going to aim to have his leg go towards the corner of the paper. Do you see those corners right there? His big legs are going to be spread out towards those corners. So I'm going to start here right underneath his ear. I'm going to head towards the corner, but right before I get there, I'm going to do a curved line and I'm going to come back. It's going to bump into the ear. I'm going to take my marker away, use my finger to go through the ear because I don't want my line to go through the ear and finish. So it looks like the leg is right behind the ear. And then down here, I'm going to finish by giving him a skinnier part of his leg. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So here's the ear. I'm going to go right underneath the ear. I'm going to put my marker right here. I'm going to head towards the corner of the page. I'm going to go, 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 go. Right before I get there, I'm going to reverse and I'm going to head back. I'm going to bump into the ear and I don't want my marker to go through the ear. So I'm going to jump over the ear. I can use my finger to draw a pretend line. It's going to come out right here and it's going to bump into the body. Then I'm going to give him the rest of his leg here with two straight lines that go right off the page. And this really looks a little funny until you start adding spots because you're trying to figure out, it almost looks like he's, a, he's wearing a shirt. So he needs his other legs and his other legs would be far away. So they'd be smaller, they'd be behind him. So right where you started, do you remember how we drew a line out and we reversed? I'm gonna put my marker back there again but this time I'm gonna draw a line going down and I'm gonna reverse, but this is gonna be a skinnier line. It's gonna be a skinnier smile line, like a skinny letter U. And then I'll give him the rest of his leg right off the page. I'm gonna do the same thing on this other side. So a skinnier leg. Do you remember how we started right here where the ear met the face? I'm going to go down towards the paper, but right before I get to the bottom, I'm going to reverse and go whoop and back up. And then I'm going to finish the leg. And that is the body of your giraffe. Now he's going to need some spots, but one thing we're going to do first is we're going to add a horizon line. If everyone remembers what a horizon line is, or if you're new, you might not know. So a horizon line is the line where it shows you the difference between the sky and the earth. So this horizon line is going to start right anywhere, anywhere on your draft's body. You're going to take your marker, put it there, and you're going to go right off the side of the page. But you want your horizon line on the other side to be exactly where you put that. So I'm gonna draw an invisible line through my giraffe. It comes out right here. 
and I'm gonna draw a line off the page. So this is my sky and this is my ground. Now I decided that in Africa you get these beautiful sunsets and the sunset, it looks, the sun looks really, really, really big. So in order to make the giraffe kind of his, his butt look a little bit smaller, we're gonna do a big sun over it. So this line, I'm gonna find the middle. And then I'm gonna draw a curved line around his body. So that was his body and this line went right around it. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm gonna find the middle and it doesn't have to be exact. I'm gonna come up. Uh-oh, I'm gonna run into the tail. So what do I do? I take my marker away. I can draw an imaginary line with my finger. It comes out right here and I'm gonna go right off the paper. And there is your giraffe. So how's everyone doing? Do you guys have a giraffe too? He kind of needs something really important that giraffes have, right? He needs all of those spots. So this is your opportunity to add those spots. Now remember giraffe spots, and I'm gonna bring out my friend here. Giraffe spots aren't circles, they're not ovals. They're kind of these different types, type of shape. So they can be wobbly, they can be shorter on one side, they can be longer on the other side. They can look more like teardrops or bananas or jelly beans, but they're not circles and they're not ovals. So, so when you're drawing your spots on your giraffe, you can start on one side of the body and you can kind of make a wiggly line and you can make it look like whatever you want. So think about if you went outside and you're looking at rocks and they're not all gonna be perfectly round, but you're gonna fill in his body with these wobbly lines. So here's a wobbly line and I'm just gonna keep filling in this giraffe's body and your spots might look completely different than mine. In fact, they probably should, right? Because you're gonna draw your own style of wobbly line. So there's one side of his body, so I'm gonna make sure I do the other side. And the, si uh, the spots on the other side don't have to be the same as the ones you just drew. So don't worry about trying to make them symmetrical and match. That is perfectly okay if they are all very, very different. So I have my spots on both sides and now I wanna make sure that I get spots on my legs and here. Where I don't wanna put spots is on these guys right here, these ossicones, because these on a traditional giraffe are usually, usually brown. They usually don't have a lot of spots right there. But if you wanna add one to his face, add a couple on his face, that's totally okay. So I'm gonna keep adding spots here on his leg and your spots might be right in the middle of the leg or you can start at one side of the leg and do a wobbly line and have it go back to the edge to make it look like your spot wraps around to the other side of the leg. And you might wanna make some tiny little spots on the tinier part of the leg. And then once your leg is done over here, make sure you hop over to the other side. And again, don't worry if your spots look completely different. And while you're doing these spots, I want you to think, what color are you gonna want your spots to be? This is a very important question because do you want your giraffe to be yellow? Hello, Ellie. I cannot wait to see your giraffe. Okay, so I have all my spots on my giraffe and he is about ready to be colored in. So here is where you have to tell me, or you have to know, do you have watercolors or do you just have crayons today? If you just have crayons, you're gonna color, um, you're gonna color your, your giraffe outlined first and then the spots. 
if you have watercolors, you're going to start with the spots because the watercolor is going to do something really cool with crayons and it's going to go right over them. So you don't have to, when you're painting, if you have watercolors and you color in all the spots, you can put paint right over the top of it and the crayon won't let you put paint there. So you don't have to try to get your paintbrush in all these little cracks because that would be really hard. Now, if you have just crayons, then you can start coloring and try to color around the spots. And the reason you wanna do the body first if you're using crayon is because if I'm coloring with yellow and I accidentally get some yellow into that spot there, that's okay because when I color the spots, I can color right over that yellow and it'll be totally fine. So what color is your giraffe gonna to be today? So if your giraffe is gonna be yellow, then the spots, you want them to be every color except yellow. If you want a realistic giraffe, you can get out your brown. See, I'll show you him again, or like an orangish brown. Um, if you want him to be a rainbow giraffe, now's your chance to get out whatever color you want and to start coloring in whatever spots you want with your crayon. So I chose purple first because I've decided that I think I'm going to do another yellow giraffe and I'm going to, I have this one purple, so I'm going to make purple kind of all over him or maybe I'll do purple spots here, blue spots here, green spots here and kind of go down like that. You have a lot of options. So that might be a fun idea. So I'm going to make him have purple spots at the very top here. And again, if you're painting, your paint is going to go right over your crayons. So I'll make a couple be purple over here on this side. And maybe one more here. And then maybe I'll move to blue spots. Let's see. I have lots of blues here. So I'm really excited to know what color are you coloring in your spots? Are you making a realistic giraffe? Or are you making a rainbow giraffe like I am? Or maybe you've chosen something completely different. I always get really excited when you guys send me your pictures. Okay, so I have some blue. Now I'm going to do some green. That's a really light green. And I'm slowly moving down my giraffe's body. And maybe I'll make this one right in the middle of his head green. And I'm going to pop over to his leg. And yellow would have been the next color, but I don't want to color yellow because my giraffe's gonna be yellow. And if I give him yellow spots, then what might happen is I might lose my spots when I color. So I'm gonna skip yellow and I'm gonna get out my orange. And I'm gonna keep on going. Come over here, do some orange. And a couple over here. Then I'll get out maybe pink and red. Let's see. Do 
do some pink. And it can take a really long time to color in all these spots on your giraffe. Depending on how many spots your giraffe has. Okay, I'm almost there finishing my spots and if you guys don't finish coloring your spots you can always finish coloring even after I'm gone even after this video ends you can always keep going and you can always come back if I go too fast on anything and you can watch it again hey okay, I'm gonna get out my brown now Betcha you wonder where this brown's gonna go. I'm gonna give him his brown tail. Now you might have chosen a rainbow tail. Mine's gonna have a brown tail. And then I'm gonna color this part of his, of his fur going up. Now you notice when I color over it with the brown, how you can still see, you can still see that black zigzag line that I did. So it gives him a little bit of a shadow. So it almost looks like he's got like that spikier, spikier fur. And then his ossicones, I'm also going to color brown. Now, depending on what picture of a giraffe you're looking at, sometimes the brown is only at the top and sometimes it comes down a lot farther. So if you're going for a realistic giraffe, you can choose. And then I'm also going to color in the inside of his ears. Okay. So I'm guessing you're probably really still coloring in your giraffe spots. So I'm going to show you why it's important to use the crayons or the oil pastels. And this way, if you do the spots first, you don't have to wait or you don't have to try to get your little paintbrush into all these little tiny crevices because that can be really hard to do. Hello, Marilyn. Thanks for joining me. That's a surprise. Um, so I'm going to get out my watercolors next and I'm just going to show you. So if you're still coloring and you're giraffe in, don't worry about it. Of course, I always have my water paintbrush because watercolors I need to get some water first and I need my brush is pretty thirsty so I'm going to grab my yellow and I'm going to show you what happens and I don't think I cleaned out my paint very well so we'll see how yellow this is but again I'm going to go and I am going to swirl my paintbrush around in the paint until I can see the yellow on my brush and watch what's going to happen Do you see how the crayon won't really let me paint on top of it? You might see little spots at first, but those will dry. But this way I don't have to try to take my brush and go all the way in and out of all these spots. You can just get your, your paint and you could just paint right on top of it. Just like that. If you want to take your paintbrush and go around each one, you can always do that too. But this is a really fast and easy way to be able to paint around all these little tiny details that you might have drawn and want either a giraffe or another piece of art without having to, to take time to do all those details. So I'm going to keep working on my giraffe. I'm going to give my brush another drink, get my yellow, and do his ear. And again, it's super fast to be able to paint right over those spots because, and those are just crayons. So you can use oil pastels to do the same thing. But if all you have is Crayola crayons, they're going to just let you paint right over them, just like that. I'm going to do this little leg down here and the other little leg. And then the ear. And 
and I'm just going to paint again right over those spots. Now, if you didn't have watercolors today and you just had crayons, you might still be trying to color your giraffe body and that's okay. You don't have to have watercolors to do any of the projects that I do. You can just show up here with crayons and you're still good to go. It might take you a tiny bit longer, but that's okay. It's just, it's going to look different and it's going to look just as beautiful. So I'm going to do my giraffe's face. So there I have it, my giraffe. So while I have my watercolors out, I'm going to paint my grass and my sky and this beautiful orange sun. But you can use crayons for that also. So I'm gonna get some green next. I'm gonna get some more water and pick a green. And I'm gonna give some really nice green grass to my giraffe who is having a nice drink. And my own kids kept asking, well, where's the water? He's leaning down, so the water is really right in front of the giraffe, right? And as you paint your grass, that giraffe is really going to pop that bright yellow against that beautiful green. And if you remember, you don't have to get more paint on your brush when you're using watercolor. If this is too dark, you can pick your water back up and give your brush another drink and use the water to smear the watercolor around. And you can see that there's still paint on my brush. So I can kind of borrow some paint from down here to use up here. If you want a really dark color, when you're using watercolor, then you're gonna to wanna to go get more paint. But if you just want that light color, you can use the water all the time without the paint and smear it around. So I'm gonna get some blue next for my sky. And I'm gonna be careful to go around the sun and his little tail depending on how big of a tail you drew for your giraffe, your sun might be in the way or it might not. So this is, as you can see, really dark. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna grab my water again and I, I'm gonna just use the water to smear that paint around. So I have that beautiful blue sky. Now, if you remember, we were talking about in Africa, you get these beautiful sunsets and the sun is just this big golden orange ball in the sky. So you can choose yellows or oranges or reds, whatever color you would like to paint your sun. And you can choose more than one too. So I have an orange here and I have a red. So I might choose to add both colors in at once. And that sun is going to look extra beautiful because, guess what? It is a complementary color to blue. So that means when they're next to each other, you've really noticed they're kind of the opposites. So you can see how bright that sun is against that blue background. So I'm going to pick him up so I can show you. So you can see a little bit closer. And you can see that I use the orange and the red and because they're watercolors, they kind of mixed around. And if you're using crayons, you might consider putting down some orange first and then getting a darker orange or a red and then coloring right on top of it so that you get that multicolor look to your sun. 
and that's it for my giraffe. So you guys are probably still working, and I'm going to show you this guy again. This giraffe I did just with crayons. I actually used oil pastels for this guy, and they look like this. So they almost look like crayons, if anyone's curious, but they look like thick crayons. You can see, just like that. But these are neon, so they make him extra bright. But this one wasn't done with any watercolors at all. It was just using the crayon, or just using the crayons and oil pastels and going around him. So again, like I said, you don't have to have watercolors to do this project. And you, you guys are finishing, and I know we had some people who signed on late. I'm going to show you guys again what we're going to be doing this Thursday and next week. So this Thursday, we have the Daydreaming Hedgehog. And we're actually going to draw him right side up. And then we're going to lay him down in the grass and add some stuff. A nice carpet of grass for him to lie on. And then next week, we're going to be doing Rainbow Tiger. So, and again, this is just, I used a marker and just crayons or oil pastels. And this one, you can bring whatever you have too. But this is Stingray. So this is like going to the aquarium where all these guys are swimming by and suddenly one pops up against the glass and surprises you. So um, this is what's coming and I am working on an octopus one right now. So you guys will probably see the sample for that on Thursday. So stay tuned for that. And again, if any of you have a suggestion or anything that you would like me to um, develop a lesson on, anything that you're just loving right now, please let me know in the comments because I have a list and um, there's a unicorn one that I'm working on and a mermaid and someone asked for a vulture, so I'm doing that one. And But anyway, you can always feel free to add whatever you want in the comments and I'll add it to the list and I promise I'm working on all of them. And that's it. So I'll be back on uh, Thursday for the Hedgehog. And if you know anyone who would like to join me on Thursday, please let them know. And I'll be back again with the Hedgehog. And that one is just a marker and crayons. And we'll do it. Sloth or a peacock. Those are, those are perfect ideas. I love those. And I love peacocks. So especially peacocks. And I just saw that there was a baby sloth that was born at a zoo. So I'm going to go get some pictures. Maybe I'll work on those right away. So thanks everyone for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I'll be back on Thursday. And please post your pictures in the comments here because I love seeing them. And or message me and it'd be great. Oh, you know, a horse. I love, love, love horses. So we definitely can do a horse. So thanks everyone. See you guys on Thursday. Bye.